Now the couple who pocketed thousands of dollars organising sham marriages between Australian women and Indian men who wanted to stay here. Tonight their one-stop visa shop is no more. Chetan, needed to talk to you about sham marriages. I just want to ask you about the marriage scam. Can you tell us anything about Excuse that, Divya? we've got, got to go to court. They're low lives, they're disgusting, that they're preying on young girls. Evidence in court is that you were the boss of this sham marriage ring. Chetan, is that the case? I don't comment on that. He is the migration agent. Obviously, Divya, Look, you're interfering in, with the court process. Witnesses in court Please have said that, that you performed these marriages, Please Divya. go away. She is the marriage celebrant. Together, they ran a scam marriage business from this townhouse in Brisbane South. It was $600 straight up, which I got, and then a grand a month. Young women like Renee were paid to marry Indian men like Manjeet, who wanted to stay in Australia, much to the horror of Renee's mum, Julie. We met her for two minutes, and she signed a paper, and, and that was it. It sounds like married at first sight, couples meeting for the first time on their wedding day to get hitched. Trouble is, in these cases, there was no church, there were no vows, no wedding rings, and no one kissed the bride. All they did was sign a marriage certificate and go their separate ways. Please go away. You're interfering with the court case that is now going on. We've been reporting on these two for five years, and now finally the law has caught up with them. They've been found guilty of organising 16 sham marriages. And she said, you can't get in trouble. You'll be right, they can't find out. 18-year-old Renee says she was introduced to Chetan Mashru and Divya Gowda by a friend. Struggling to make ends meet financially, she says she was lured by the promise of quick cash. Yeah, I remember the celebrant, because she had a red dot on her head. Kind of a little, yeah, she was dark. They are all dark, like Indians. The court heard two Aussie women who were cousins both married Indian men on the same day at Chetan's townhouse. In another case, an Indian groom got married there twice. The first time round, his Aussie bride left without signing the necessary paperwork. But he was back a few months later marrying someone else. It certainly wasn't a chapel of love. It was more a one-stop wedding shop. There was heaps of, like, young people there, like, young Indian men getting visas and, like, two other girls. Well, me and this other girl got married while we were there. You met this girl who you don't know and you married her straight away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That Manjeet and his bride Renee say Chet and Mashru chose to put them together. Boss man, yeah, just picked everyone for it. So we had no say. And the boss man was making big money. The court heard the Indian grooms were prepared to pay up to $40,000 to snare an Aussie bride. The brides were usually paid an upfront fee and then a monthly retainer for two years, the period it took for the Indian grooms to qualify for Australian citizenship. Talking about 16 marriages in a 12-month period, that's a lot of marriages. It says you made a lot of money out of it. Is that the case? Hey, Manjeet, it's Renee. I need to talk to you, so please give me a call. Thanks. In the end, Renee didn't get paid what she was promised and her hubby Manjeet disappeared. You must have known this was illegal. Police gave immunity to some of the Indian grooms and their Aussie brides in return for giving evidence against Chetan and Divya. Were you organising these arranged marriages? They all happened at your place, the same place. No wedding rings, no vows, no families. Doesn't sound like real marriages, Chetan. If you went and done it in their country, what would happen to you? I'm sure they wouldn't like it. They'd probably burn an effigy of you or something. <laughs> Chet and Mashru and Divya Gowda were found guilty of 66 charges and will be sentenced tomorrow. They face 10 years behind bars.